everyone and welcome to this week's segment of futures with Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGage com. And of course, we've been seeing a bit of a meltdown in the equity space. And I think what's noteworthy, and I don't have to show it to you, but just keep it in your mind that if you read my daily, you'll know that I talk a lot about specific ratios and moving averages. And tonight, I'm talking about, well, actually it'll be morning for you, IWM and the small caps, which have underperformed the growth stocks all year and now are at threat of a major breakdown, which of course would have all kinds of implications. So check that out. In the meanwhile, obviously, all these people who have been running in to buy bonds really are anticipating some kind of a capitulation and that the Fed would change its stance have been greatly disappointed and probably lost a lot of money as the yields continue to spike today. Along with the yields, of course, we also have had the dollar. So we're going to examine some of the relationships the dollar has. We're going to start with the yen. We're going to look at it with the British pound and the euro, go a little bit into gold, natural gas, and oil. And that's it for today. Some short-term ideas for trading tomorrow. So let's start first here with the yen, because what's so interesting is that Japan neglected to confirm or deny that they did some level of intervention. But if you can see this bar here, that is not a mistake. For a half a second, we had this major blip, and everybody in the world was looking at this 150 level. We cleared it for like a nanosecond, and now we're closing below it. So it makes the idea of a reversal potential where the yen can start to outperform the dollar a little bit. Uh, harder to predict because, of course, you can see with this big, big wick after the body of the candle, we can't say that too clearly. But what we can say very clearly is that this is the second, well, not even the second time, it's the one, two, three, fourth time in our real motion indicator that we are having a mean reversion sell signal. And again, this is the dollar versus the yen. So that tells you that the sell signal is in that relationship, which means, should mean, that the yen will go up. Now, of course, if we also look at these bars here, you can see that they've made higher lows. So you probably would say some confirmation that this sell signal is real and not just a blip would be if this momentum comes down here underneath this 7.107 level. Now, in terms of the actual price, if we blow this out a little bit, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. Everybody knows about 150. And as I'm talking to you, this is starting to sell off a little bit as we're getting close to the close. But you know, also, by the way, let me, I cannot you know, remiss here on the past history. We talked about this last week, about how critical this level was. And it exactly, actually, almost to the date, it's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it, really. We had that same kind of, whoa, Yen did something, they did an intervention, first it was denied, then it was confirmed, and of course that was the end of the dollar for a while. We'll talk about that and how that might affect the commodities momentarily. But for now, let's say that if history repeats itself, and this bar looks anything like this bar on a more mini schedule, then any rally that cannot sustain itself over, let's say, about 149.27, to me, would be a signal that perhaps we'll start to see the yen get a little bit stronger against the dollar. So 149.27 is my key area right here, bias above more positive, bias below more negative. And if we really want to look back just a little bit down here, we can say that this low from this day lines up very well with the body of the candle as I'm talking to you today. So a move under 148.50 kind of tells me that our next stop could be closer to that, back down to that 50-day moving average. This is now the dollar versus the British pound. Again, now this actually could be a bona fide reversal. If we look back, we're kind of in the resistance area where we were in the beginning of this year. Of course, in the same period as we just looked at the yen, the dollar was much stronger against the British pound right here. So <clears throat> at this point, right now, if we look at the momentum indicators, we don't see too much. We actually see a little bit of a, a bump in momentum, but if you follow my cursor to the left, you can see that the last time we were at these levels, so was the price. So even though the momentum looks stronger, the price was higher actually a little bit back then. So that tells me that this too 
has the potential. And of course, I've been saying that for a while that the dollar looks like it's topping out, but then again, it goes higher. So just take this with a grain of salt. You have to be active. But nonetheless, at this point now, I would take this low of today, which is at uh, 0.82647. Below that, I would say probably more of a negative bias. And then I would be looking for the next support. This doesn't move very much, but I'd be looking for the next support somewhere around 0.8175. Of course, if we take out the high of today, which would be 0.82964, so let's call it 0.83, then now we're looking at going back to these levels right here, and probably that would mean a rally somewhere around 0.84. Okay, next one, of course, will be this against the euro. And it looks actually almost identical to what we just looked at, dollar, British pound. So that's not really altogether surprising. Same kind of thing. We've got the bump in momentum. If we go back to the last time we were here and look at the price, look at how much the higher the price was at these points, the dollar versus the euro uh, in the momentum. So this tells me that the momentum is kind of weak. Again, we have another key potential for a reversal to the downside because this is a new 60 plus day high, which means under the low of today, 0.9533, then maybe I would be looking at being a seller of the dollar, the buyer of the euro, and of course on the flip side above 0.9568, which is the high, then I would say, yeah, probably we're going to be looking at maybe a move up around, uh, I don't know, let's call it 90s. Well, I don't even know if we'd get that high. I'd say next target would be around 96.10. Looking at the gold chart here, this is just gold futures. This is not December. This is spot, COMEX spot gold. And the reason why I'm showing you this chart is because I want you to see the momentum indicators at the same time along with the futures. And of course, you know, we talked about how we had those mean reversions and we had that pop above the 50 back into a bullish phase, uh, and yet it never really cleared that 1990, 2000. Then again here, we had that pop, but it couldn't get through 1980. And then of course, last week we started the sell-off and here we are now at around 1840. So what's interesting is, let's start with the momentum, because I find these momentum indicators so key. This momentum gapped down along with the market, uh, especially if you're looking at the ETF. And here we are, if you take this line right here from this low and you follow it here, the last time we had momentum this week, the price actually was a little bit different. The price at that point was trading uh, between uh, 1647 and 1720. So that gives me an idea that it is still possible we could see lower in gold. I'm not going to come out here and say I'm a raging bull at this point. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one is it is very oversold. Number two is seasonally gold likes this. Number three is when gold looks like dreck, which is a good word from New York, then generally that means it's time to buy. Number four, is that this shows absolutely no fear at all that all of this rising dollar, rising uh, yields, panic with uh, striking and, and, and oil situation with OPEC coming up and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that nothing is going to happen to affect the gold price, the, that gold is dead. And maybe it is, but maybe it isn't. Because the fourth thing is that GDX, the gold miners, actually in the face of everything turned green today. So keep an eye on those gold miners. We talked about that before, which is what gave us the hint of this last little rally. So in terms of levels right here, I would say this level that you can see right here at 1840, I mean, we had mentioned 1850 to 1840, so the high was at 1850. Above 1850, I would say you got a pretty good risk. Tight would be the body of the candle, which would be at around 1840, so about $10. Obviously, you can take a look at 1830 as well. But I would say between under 1840, maybe I would think more downside as possible, because remember, oversold can become much more oversold. However, above 1845 and definitely above 1850, then I think a bounce would be something reasonable to expect. Where could it bounce to? Well, last time we were at these levels was back here when we had this big drop and everybody was super negative. And then, of course, we went right back. By the way, in 2018, 
gold was is oversold as it is now it was at twelve hundred dollars an ounce and then rallied as we know uh, up to two thousand dollars an ounce as we got into 2020 but of course that was a different situation anyway right now I would say if we do get a bounce above 1840 to 1850 the next reasonable place to really look for resistance uh, and you can even say 1852 really but the next place to look for resistance would really be I think 1860 I think you got to look at it every ten dollars now and and really play it that short term maybe 1867 um, if we get some major gap up tomorrow, there's a lot of shorts in this market. It's possible we can see a move. We may even see a move high as high back up over 1900. Notice now how the 50 day moving average is starting to slope down towards the 200. Doesn't mean we'll have a death cross, but we certainly have to be prepared for it. Looking at crude oil futures here, we did say that if we went back in time, we did have some resistance back here at these levels. If you went back into a year ago, or a little bit more than a year ago, like 14 months ago. And so that turned out to be right. We had a reversal. I had mentioned that we were gonna take some profits if it broke down under 90, and we did. We are completely actually flat. Uh, in terms of the discretionary model right now uh, in the crude oil. That doesn't mean we wouldn't get back in. We have a big OPEC plus meeting. But for now, if we just look at the fact that sometimes you get about a 10% correction. So a 10% correction from 90, we'll call it 93, because this is WTI. From 93, that would be about a $9 move down. So that would be at about 84. That would be a really nice correction, and I would think a buyable one. But for very short term right now, I'd just like to give you some parameters. Essentially, what you can see right here is if we take the highs and just a little bit above the low of today, 86.35 is a good support area. We hold 86.35, perhaps we can see another bounce back up. Where would that bounce potentially be? I would say probably up to around 88.40, 88.50, short term. Underneath this level here that I just mentioned to you, then uh, I would say that we're looking at uh, maybe under 86.80. Maybe we're looking for a move not just back down to the low today, but the next real area of support, which would be right around this cluster of opens and close at around 85.20. And let's just going back here, if we get back over these levels at around 88.50, 88.40, then your next point of resistance would have to be somewhere around 89 to 89.20, and that's very short term. Last, let's take a look at natural gas. So as far as natural gas, I'm trying to be really super consistent with showing you the same contract, and on the bar charts that I've been showing you, the contract keeps changing in the prices, so I'm gonna stick with this chart right here. This is just cash futures, and we talked about the fact that it was clearing the 200, and look at this. You can see that the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average are converging, which could mean a golden cross. That would be kind of cool. What's even more interesting is that in momentum, you can see this has been outperforming in terms of the price momentum for quite some time, which is why I've had my eyes on it. And if we go back to the last time momentum was at these levels, just bring this down so you can see. The last time the momentum was at these levels, we are talking about prices that were up at around seven, eight dollars. So, you know, this is kind of a big difference here. The momentum is improving. Also, the momentum here has cleared the zero line. We consider that to be a good indication. So, yet price is still sideways. That base continues. So here's how we're looking at this. Now with this potential golden cross, we can if we see that golden cross, that would tell us that we don't really want to see this thing break down looking at this particular contract at 275. Let's call it 275, 280 because that was a big breakout to me. And we also have not been able to close above this level right here at 2.978. So we can say about three. So let's call it anywhere between three and 301, a closing basis on that. Intraday, obviously, if it gets above, that would be bullish. But if it closes there, then I start to think maybe we're onto something here with this natural gas. So really, really short term, since uh, from three to 280 is, is a huge move in this spot contract, I would say let's tighten it up even more. Let's call it 280 to 287 to 290, above, bullish, below, bearish, 
we get through obviously this 299 to 3, more bullish. We get under the 287, I think we'd have to look back and see what happens as it gets closer here to 280 to 275. Okay, that's it for now. Hope this was helpful. You all have a great trading day. Bye for now.